since I need onion powder. Did I say garlic powder? Did I say I got all the powders? That's all you can. Not all the powders. Never mind. <laughs> I shouldn't say I got all the powder. I don't. I don't have all the powders. You know, I have the ones that you can cook with. I don't have all the powders. Let me just clarify that real quick. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and move on and talk about the deliverance. So I actually seen this from Larry Reed. He had uh, posted this on Facebook. Um, I forgot I was even following him on Facebook. But this is from the UK Mirror, and it says Netflix next Netflix users demand demonic new horror movie The Deliverance uh, is taken down. So they want it taken down. The Deliverance. Now, as you guys know, I did see the movie. I enjoyed it. Um, was it the best movie ever? No, no, no. It wasn't the best movie. I'm not going to say this movie should win some awards because a lot of people are saying that Glenn Close should win awards for her role and stuff like that. Uh, I wouldn't go that far, right? But what I will say is that I like the movie. So here's my thing with that whole, this movie is demonic and all this other stuff. It's a movie. But let's go ahead and read what the mirror said. Actually, it's the Mirror US. I thought it was the Mirror UK. I'm sorry. Uh, it says, a new Netflix horror movie, The Deliverance, starring Andre Day and Glenn Close, has divided viewers with some even calling for the film to be removed from the streaming platform. Remember, it's been number one this whole time, but now there's this new movie that I want to actually watch. It's called Rebel. It's actually number one right now. So it says the supernatural horror film has captivated certain audience with its story of a real life haunted occurrence, while others have deemed it too disturbing to finish. In the film, R&B sensation Audra Day uh, stars as Ebony Jackson, an alcoholic mother struggling to build a new life in their third house, only to confront unsettling happenings that suggest they're living in a portal to hell itself. Acting heavy heavyweight Glenn Close appears as Evan. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Let me get to the comments. Okay, so it says um, echoes of this content um, have resounded across online networks like Facebook, with fans voicing their letdowns. A disappointed member of Netflix Bangers Facebook group posted, "I'm begging Netflix to take off the, that movie uh, Deliverance from Netflix, else I'm not paying it for it anymore." Uh, it says the same individual shared their journey from anticipation to disillusionment, stating, I was anxious to see the movie, but I stopped halfway through, and the movie is is most demonic, depressing movie I've ever watched. So this is somebody saying all this. There, it's the most demonic movie that they ever watched. It's horrible. They got some other people saying the same thing. Okay. If you... If you hated the movie, that's one thing, but we're not going to try to get Netflix to take down the movie because what about all the other movies that are mostly starring a white cast where they have those movies up? Um, the Conjuring, uh, The Exorcism of Emily Rose, hell, The Exorcism. Why has nobody ever requested those movies to be taken down? But this movie that happened to be number one until yesterday, now it's number two. It's still in the top 10. We want to take that movie down. And honestly, to tell you the truth, the reason why I bring this up is because it, it's not only this moment. There has been a lot of conversation about like people saying, I can't watch the movie or I don't watch things like that, blah, blah, blah. And it's one thing. Okay, you don't watch it. But to actually try to champion to take it down, it sounds like it's something else. It sounds like it's not about demons and spirits. It sounds like it's more about uh, this happens to be a movie of people of color and we want to take it down. Because simply, you cannot watch it. You don't have to watch it. But you want to take this movie down or request that it comes down yeah, that sounds like something else to me. That sounds like something else. Out of all the movies, I would see if, you know, Black people had a, 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 a grab on that genre of movie, and it seemed like it was a lot of 
uh, conjuring and spiritual and demonic movies featuring black people, I could see, okay, it's like a way what's going on. Is there some kind of alternative agenda going on? Blah, blah, blah. I can understand that, right? But what I can't understand is that we literally are going to try to take this movie down or these people were upset about this movie when we got the Poltergeist. So, so many other movies that deal with the same concept about spirits and all this and being possessed. If you're not a fan of horror movies, you shouldn't be watching it anyway, right? And then secondly, if you don't like the movie, you don't like the movie, but it has nothing to do with you trying to... Uh, th that's ridiculous. Just don't watch it. I am a firm believer if you don't like something, you just don't watch it. And again, I had talked about this. I was like, for me, I've seen it as more of like, it's entertainment. I know it's based off a true story, but they changed it, flipped it, and reversed it so much that Latoya Amons, the actual woman, it, it, it's a shell of her story. It's literally a shell of her story. It's not even the whole thing. Because also a lot of the backlashes is, is that they're saying Latoya Amons, the actual woman, they're saying that she lied about her story. She was really abusing her kids, but she lied and said it was spirits and stuff like that. But even then, you know, the psychologist had said, like, they seen the kid climb up the wall and do a backflip over his grandma. So, I mean, obviously she was talking about something. And the thing is, People don't want to kind of open their mind up to it. And so I think they are scared of it. Because, shit, I, I'm going to be honest, it scared the shit out of me thinking like, oh, shit, this could be real? You know what I mean? Now, the actual movie, The Deliverance, no, that didn't scare me. But the possibility, like, something like that could happen in real life. Now, that when I'm, that's when I'm like, oh, okay, that that came, that, that's a little scary. I ain't gonna lie, that, that kind of, you know, got me, oh, nervous and tripling. You know, that got me kind of scared. But the actual movie, no, that, that did not scare me. That did not scare me at all. Um, I don't agree with uh, President AT2. We don't uh, want these kind of movies portrayed upon. No, Miss Barbara, be quiet. I don't want to hear that. <laughs> this Barbara, you saying exactly the opposite thing of what I was saying. Like, there's not a whole host of different movies that we have some kind of lockdown on this genre. This is like one in between in a few. Like, come on now. Thank you, beautiful. Like, I was all like, the heck is going? What is this Barbara talking about? But thank you, Miss Barbara. I appreciate you. I don't care what y'all do. I pray to the Holy Spirit to be in my home always. Yeah, your, your home gotta be good. Exactly. They said the real lady was behind on her rent and she said the spirits took the money. I heard that too, Miss Brooke. Uh, she's the documentary about that. Right. And Jella is on uh, Amazon too. So should they just take that down too? The documentary? Like, how far are we going to take it? Uh, for me, the most offensive part was Glenn Close. Her character uh, was unneeded and was just there to add as an element of confusion. Ooh! Ooh! So we talking about the fabric of the community. <laughs> I know y'all get mad at me when I say that, but I don't care. It's my show. Okay. So we're going to talk about uh, Glenn Close's character. I think Glenn Close's character was basically to show how the grandmother kind of, the trauma, the history being passed down to her daughter, right? Because things were done to her da daughter, Ebony, a.k.a. Andre Day, right? And then the grandma was kind of like the protector of the kids. And she was the one that was there to like help, you know, be in between of the kids, you know, her doing stuff to the kids and stuff like that. Because remember, she said she was going to take them. Generational curses, yes. That's how I felt about um, uh, Glenn Close's part. And I think also, too, because 
the real mom did live in the home as well, too. So they kind of try to portray the mom, but they changed it up and made Ebony biracial, and then they made the mama uh, white. I think that, now, I don't know why he wanted to make her white. Maybe they wanted Glenn Close in the movie always, so they were like, okay, well, let's make the mama white, and then that's how we can, because he could have easily been the, uh, what's him call it? I felt like Glenn Close could have been the social worker or whatever. You know, Monique's character, she could have been the social worker. But maybe they're all like, no, we want Glenn Close to be the mama. And Glenn Close, you know, transformed and stuff like that. And, I, and I'm personally still not offended by Glenn Close's character. I feel like Glenn Close did not do a caricature of a Black woman. She did she did more of a caricature of a white woman with mixed kids. That's what he, I mean she had the hair look at look at uh Glenn J. Blige. Hold on, let me uh get a picture of her. Do I still got a picture of her? There we go. Glenn J. Blige, look at her. Uh Glenithia Leak. You know, she looked like uh Nene Leak. Glenithia Leaks. That's what I'm gonna start calling her, Glenithia Leaks, because she looked like Nene Leaks. Because you know Nene look, Nene Leaks looked like a white woman, allegedly. Uh, with them Ronald McDonald's, <laughs> yo, the eyebrows are crazy. Listen, Miss <laughs> Miss Alberta is somebody in y'all neighborhood. Remember, I asked y'all if y'all had ever seen a Miss Alberta before, and y'all was like, "Some of y'all said no, I never knew a Miss Alberta." Blah blah blah. I was like, "Y'all have a white lady." Listen, I went to the grocery store before I started this live, right? I seen about I didn't see a Miss Alberta, but I seen about three products of Miss Alberta. Again, I seen three products of a Miss Alberta at the grocery store. Was it Miss Henry? Yo, so uh, for, fun fact for those of y'all who don't know, what's up, Miss CC? For those of y'all who don't know, Miss Henry, the TikToker, she read for Glenn Close because Glenn Close wanted some kind of, uh, they needed her to, you know, change the way she spoke, right? So they had Miss Henry read her lines. And so um, Glenithia Leakes could find a, um, an accent or, you know, a, another voice to use. So, yeah, so that's a fun fact about Miss Henry. But, yeah, this woman right here, we, we've seen this woman before. We, we ain't never seen her in a movie, but we've seen this woman before. Especially if you lived in the suburbs. How many of y'all live in Vegas? In Vegas, it ain't nothing but mixed couples. Black, white, it doesn't matter. Woman, man, in uh, Vegas, it's a whole bunch of mixed couples out there. So if you live in Vegas, Ken, you used to live in Vegas, right? I know you done seen you a whole bunch of Miss, uh, <laughs> Miss Alberta's out there. Miss Alberta. Glenithia leaks. Y'all don't seen all of them. I'm telling you, y'all don't seen all of them. Y'all just don't want to see it. But again, for me, I didn't feel like she she dated her a black man, you know. But I didn't see her actually being offensive, and I didn't see her roll her neck or you you know like the stereotypes. I didn't see that. She played a role of you know. Uh, a white woman who got mixed kids. That's what I feel like she played. I, I didn't feel like she was playing into a stereotype or anything like that. Now, you know, she dressed sexy and stuff like that, which she should, you know? That's how the Miss Albertas be looking. Like, they be dressed up and everything like that. Had her on her wigs and everything. Listen. I think Miss Alberta was supposed to give us kind of like also too, 
like a distraction from the topic as well too because um when, <laughs> when she came out with that stick when when Glenithia, aka alberta came out with that stick and told monique to get off that house that was hilarious so it had to be mixed in with the comedy and y'all know the one line i can smell your nappy but again, she was possessed by a demon. That's why she said that. Oh, she was most definitely a distraction. <laughs> Listen, I will say this. This is going to be an unpopular opinion, and I hate that this is probably true. If the movie gets nominated for anything, I guarantee you, Monique, Andre Day, uh, uh, what's the other lady name? Basically, they're not going to be nominated. Glenn Close is probably going to get an Oscar nom. <laughs> Even though it got a 33% on Rotten Tomatoes and stuff like that, I guarantee you they are going to promote uh, the hell out of Glenn Close to get an Oscar for this role. Anjanou Ellis, yes. Thank you, Miss Brooks. Anjanou Ellis, yeah. She is going to be the one to get all the accolades and everything. Everybody else ain't gonna get nothing. And honestly, too, Monique didn't have that big of a role. Monique did not have a big as a role as I thought she would. She wasn't really... I, I felt like... If I had to choose between who wasn't needed in the story... Monique... I don't feel like Monique was really needed in the story. I feel like they could have passed on Monique. I feel like her role was so small and it, it really wasn't nothing. They could have talked about a social worker without having a social worker actually there. You know, that's how I kind of feel if, if there's a character that we didn't need. Now, Monique, I'm happy that she's working and, you know, getting her money. But if I had to pick a character, I would say her over... Um, you know, Miss Lenithia Leakes, a.k.a. Uh, Alberta, a.k.a. Glenn Close. But, you know, one thing I am proud when we talk about the whole race thing, I'm happy that it did bring up this conversation because there's some people who are still uncomfortable with it. There's some people who don't want to see it. But, I mean, it's there. If they were going to take this woman's real life story, talking about Latoya Amos, a real woman, they're going to take her story and then put some kind of spin on it and make it grand or very big, then, yeah, make up shit to it, you know? Make up some stuff to it. Oh, you think Andre Day would get one? She did for Billie Holiday. That's right, that's right. Omar Epps' character wasn't really needed. That's true. That's true, Jella. I agree with that. Uh, but Monique's character was important, in my opinion. She witnessed the little boy break free. Right, right, right. You're right. You're right. I'll take that back. Omar Epps wasn't needed. Yeah, you're right. Because we really didn't need to see her dating. Because he was just in that one scene, and then we didn't see him anymore. You're right about that. I also felt, for those of you who watched it, did y'all feel like there was something, that there were parts missing? And then especially when they did like the promo and stuff like that, uh, there was like scenes that they were talking about that was cut from the movie. I was all like, y'all y'all cut out a lot of shit. Like, because it seemed like it was going on and then all of a sudden it like was over. Oh, okay, there you go, Ronnie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Omar, yeah. Omar Epps, yeah, he could have been. I don't know why he was in there. Y'all right. Yeah, the basement scene was choppy. Very choppy. I don't know if Netflix told them they had to cut it. Or hell, maybe they should have did it how they did. Um, They're doing the Menendez brothers or whatever, but you know how they did Jeffrey Dahmer and made it into like a series Maybe they should have did that instead of making it into a movie. 
do like a like a TV movie, like how they did, um, you know, the Jeffrey Dahmer story. I think that probably would have been better. They should put out the longer version than like the Lord of the Rings did. Yeah, I agree. Glenn Close and Anjanu are uh, real true witches. Mm. Uh, hit the like. Uh, yes, please hit the like. Thank you, Evie. Thank, thank you. Yeah. If Glenn and Monique switch roles, uh, the mother would have snatched the, so <laughs> the social worker <laughs> for the way she stayed talking shit. Yeah. Oh, man. That's why Glenn had to go come out and chase her with that stick. Like, get out of my house. <laughs> A limited series, that's what I mean. Yeah, a limited series. I feel like it should have been like that instead of like a movie. It, it's just like, there. I feel like there was more story to tell with between Ebony and Alberta, you know, the backstory. Like we did get like a little scene of like, you know, what happened to Ebony and she had said it. But I felt like there was more to the backstory you know, because they lived in three other homes before they got to that one, like that backstory. And, and then also the dad, the dad of the kids, like they said he was serving, but then not. And then how was he able to send the money if he was serving overseas? You know, what? Like, you know, like that part was very choppy. Like, how was the dad still giving them money? And, like, did they actually see their dad? Or their dad was just... Yeah. I felt like the dad should have been in the movie. I, I Yeah, I felt like that part was missing. Because I'm all like, the mama, the mama is allegedly beating the kids, right? She's allegedly beating the kids. And basically, the husband is just sending money, or the ex-husband is just sending money and not caring that the kids are being abused. Oh, and I want to say something else too. So a lot of people didn't realize because Ebony, aka Andre Day, she would say, I don't beat my kids. The thing was is that when the beatings and everything would happen, she was being possessed. And so she didn't know what was going on. That's why there was a scene where she was like, I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything because She's being possessed. And just like the real woman, CBS was uh, trying to take her kids because her kids were coming to school with marks and stuff like that. And she was saying like, no, they're possessed. This is why. So yeah, so it, 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 it's deep. It, the movie is deeper than what everybody sees. I think because of the funny elements of it, we took it at surface level. But yeah, that's where it was kind of following the real story and stuff like that. I used to love antiques until I brought a, a, a armoire uh, that came with a spirit. Oh, it came with a spirit. What do you mean a spirit? Hi, Teresa. Oh, my God. Thank you for coming. I appreciate you. Shout out to everybody on Facebook, but thank you for coming. Oh, she's been following me for a long time, you guys. It's always good to see the people like before I got popping on YouTube to like come and visit, that's special. Uh, right, and she wasn't lying uh, when she said she didn't remember how the kids got uh, got the bruises. Yeah, yeah, jealousy. They didn't realize that there were certain, in, uh, certain parts of it where it was relating to the real story. Like the lady, the real woman, Latoya, she didn't know how they were getting marks and Ebony didn't, but because Ebony was an alcoholic, they thought she was, you know, beating her kids. Because she was an alcoholic and she couldn't explain it. And that's why Monique was all like, so these kids got marks and you can't explain what's going on. Like, y'all don't know? And literally, no, they didn't know. Um, I think Omar was in there to show how her mom was still on her uh, BS even though she was in the church. Oh! Because she was fornicating with that man and she's supposed to be a... Oh! And you know what, Lady J, that also reminds me too. Ebony would call out, um, you know, the character for basically, uh, I'm saying the character, Glenn Close's character, Alberta. It was like, oh, so you think you all sanctified? You think you all holy now? And how many times we see the older people, all of a sudden they involved in the church, but we remember they was freaks and everything back in the day and they wasn't shit. 
but now all of a sudden you're a little older, you want to be a part of the church. See, that element of it right there, that's our real life. And I think when Lee Daniel said he was the fabric of the community, I honestly feel like he was talking about the character of what she was. Not just her being having black kids or anything like that, right? Not her being white. But I think the character, like a lot of our grandmothers, you know, go to church and stuff like that. And we only know the church side. But don't your parents ever tell you like, oh, well, when I was younger, they used to beat me. And, you know, my whoopings would be bad. Don't your parents used to say that? They used to always say that, oh, when we got whoopings, it was the worst, blah, 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 and all this other stuff. And we were like, oh, well, we love our grandma. Like, you know, grandma, cool, grandpa, grandpa don't. You know, we don't know that. We don't know the trauma that our parents went through because our grandparents are a lot different what they are now than to what they are. See, Priscilla know what I'm talking about. Yeah. That's why I'm all like, I think Lee Daniels was talking about the character. He just should have phrased it better of what he was saying, but I think he was talking about the character. That character is what, you know, is a part of the fabric of our community, the grandmother. Uh, you're going to have me sleeping with the lights on AT2 and I haven't even watched the movie. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> uh, my mom never speaks of it. Uh, of, like, the trauma and stuff that happened to her, or... Um, mm, are you talking about, like, any kind of, like, backstory or trauma? I, I want to know, Jess. Let me know. That might be a good conversation. Yeah, there was a lot of different elements in the movie. I think we just didn't grasp on us. Uh, she never wanted uh, to have any other um, perception of my grandparents other than angels. Oh, see, see, okay, okay, yeah. I don't want you to know what they did to me and I'll try to cover it up. Like there's things that happened to um, one of my parents. I never knew the backstory until I was an adult. Because, yeah, you don't share stuff like that with kids, you know? And it was like some traumatic stuff. Like, yeah, you shouldn't share that with your kids. Now that I'm an adult, you know, I can handle it and stuff like that. But there's some stuff I'll be like, whoa, that happened to you? What? You know, it, it, it's crazy when you think about it. Yeah, but that type of grandmother, the matriarch of the family, that's what I think he was actually referencing, not that the white woman is the fabric of our community. No. But I mean, you know, where you think all these mixed babies come from? Where you think Drake came from? Drake mama looked like Miss Alberta. <laughs> Drake mama looked like Miss Alberta. That, that's where it came from. Uh, grandchildren are second chances for a lot of people. Oh, true. Uh, this was a great movie and it spoke volumes, yeah. I think those hidden messages that people didn't understand or get, I think once they open up to them, they get it. And again, the movie was very choppy. So there was some stuff I'm like, Ugh. like it wasn't the acting. It, it was like the way it was configured. And it just seemed like it was very rushed at certain parts. And it just didn't make any sense. Like if you didn't know the backstory between what happened with the real woman, Latoya Amons to, now it probably didn't make sense, but now it probably makes more sense. And I mean, hell, the movie came out on the 30th and we still talking about it today. That, and it was the number one movie all the way until uh, yesterday. Now it's the number two. People still talking about it, people still quoting it. Uh, you know my favorite line, but I'm not gonna repeat it out of respect. When I was uh, little, you heard family talk in whispers. And now that I'm grown, I'm learning about family. That Exactly, exactly. I opened up y'all. Thank me later. Thank me later. See, I opened up y'all mind to stuff that y'all didn't even think about. See? Yeah. 
it's very deep. It, it's more than surface level. And I'm one of those people, I usually don't like deep thoughts or deep movies. Like, I, I want everything surface level. Surface level, I don't want to think too deep, all that. You know, for certain things, I want to think deeply. But uh, when it comes to movies, I just want to enjoy it for what it is. I usually don't like those deep thought, like, oh, well, when she opened up the door, she was actually opened up the door to the next opportunity of her life. I, I don't have time for that spiritual all around shit. I don't have time for that. Just give it to me direct. What what happened at the end of that movie? Because that shit don't make no sense. When she opened up the door and the movie cut off. And then they always got some kind of... <laughs> don't try it. I just hate those kind of movies, y'all. Like, I need the ending explained to me in the movie. Like, I don't want to have to Google it or look it up if she opened up the door and the movie cut up. Like, what does that mean? I, I want to, like, a movie got to have an ending to me. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, it will live on forever. Florida Water agree with me. Thank you. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> All right, y'all. Well, thank y'all for checking out the show. Uh, this has been a great conversation. Uh, probably the last one I'll do on the deliverance. Like, I know we had talked about the whole fabric conversation, but I kind of just wanted to do it all around. And definitely when I seen, like, they're trying to remove the movie and stuff like that, I was like, oh, no, no, no. We can't let that happen. Even if you hated the movie, like, we ain't going to do that to this one. But anyway, y'all, make sure y'all hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. I appreciate every single one of y'all, but we out of here. Deuces, everybody. We out.